In this video, we are going to show you how to replace your power steering bellows boot. Let's get started. Okay friends, it's time to get started on our job. The first thing you need to do is safely raise and support the front of the vehicle so the wheels are off the ground. After you have the wheel up in the air, continue on by removing all six of your 21 millimeter lug nuts and then the wheel. <laughs> Now let's take one of our lug nuts and a spacer. We're going to use this to hold the rotor in place while we continue. Now we can move along to where our tie rods connect. You're going to find in the center a jam nut. You want to loosen this jam nut a little bit by turning it clockwise, turning it up the inner tie rod end. After that, we can move along to this area. To loosen this jam nut, you can use a 22 millimeter wrench or 7 eighths. Now we can move along to the outer tie rod end nut. We're going to have to remove the locking cotter pin. We'll set that aside. It's a good idea to replace these. Once you have the cotter pin out of there, you're going to continue on to removing your 21 millimeter nut. After that's off of there, give it a quick inspection and put it back on a few threads. Now with this on a couple threads, we can continue by breaking the outer tie rod end free from the knuckle. There's several ways to break this free. There's a tool that you can slide over this and press down on the stud. There's also a pickle fork, which essentially would go in between the joint. You have to be careful using that because it will damage the boot. I'm just going to go ahead and continue with a hammer. The area that I'm going to hit is right along the knuckle right here. I want to be extremely careful not to damage the tie rod. Now you can see the reason why we put our safety nut on there. This didn't come falling down and potentially hurt us. Now it's time to turn the outer tie rod end counterclockwise to remove it from the inner tie rod end. It's important to make sure that you count the amount of turns it takes to remove this. So when it's time to install the outer tie rod end, you'll know exactly how many turns to turn it in. One, two, and so on. Write down that number. The next thing we want to do is come right up here to this hexed area on the shaft of the inner tie rod end. That's an area you can grab onto with either a wrench or locking pliers. We need to do that so we can hold the inner tie rod end still while we remove the jam nut. Now let's turn that jam nut counterclockwise to fully remove it. Get this off of here. Now we can start removing the bellows boot from the inner tie rod end and power steering rack. On this, you're gonna find that you have a clamp at the far end, close to me, and then all the way down where the boot connects onto the power steering rack itself, you'll find another clamp. Remove the pair and then the boot. Now that we have that out of the way, let's continue on to grabbing onto the power steering rack boot and we'll give it a little tug. As I'm doing it, I'm gonna twist it so it easily removes. We'll give that a quick inspection. Now it's time to install the power steering bellows boot. You want to make sure you use a wire tie or a clamp on the far end where it connects onto the power steering rack. We'll slide this over the inner tie rod end all the way over the power steering rack and then tighten that inboard clamp.
Now you want to make sure you secure the outer aspect of the boot as well. Copper never sees. Now we can put on our jam nut. We'll put this on approximately halfway down the threads. Now it's time to install our outer tie rod end. You wanna make sure you install this the same amount of turns as it took to remove the tie rod originally. One, two, and so on. Now we can take the tie rod stud and slide it through the knuckle. Time to put on the outer tie rod end nut. Now we can bottom this out and then torque it to 63 foot pounds. Now what you'll notice on our nut is that I had replaced the outer tie rod end. Our nut's a little bit different, but as far as the original nut, you can tell that it's a castle nut. It has a whole bunch of slots going around. Once you torque this to 63 foot pounds, you wanna get ready to put in your cotter pin. To do that, you wanna make sure that one of the slots lines up with the corresponding hole that goes through the stud of the tie rod. If it doesn't, continue tightening that nut until the very next slot does. Slide the cotter pin right through and then peen it over so there's no way this nut can loosen up on its own. Now let's move along to snugging up our jam nut. Once I have it bottomed out, I'm gonna continue on by tightening this. I'll do that by holding the outer tie rod still and then tightening the jam nut. Now we can remove our safety lug nut and spacer. At this point, you're ready to reinstall your wheel. We'll start on all six of our 21 millimeter lug nuts, snug up the lug nuts, get the wheel safely back down on the ground, and then torque each of them to 97 foot pounds. With the wheels safely back on the ground, we'll torque these in a crisscross manner. Torqued. Okay friend, the car's back together. At this point, you can go ahead and take it for a road test, make sure you don't hear any funny noises, then get yourself safely down to your local alignment shop. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.